Hey everybody, I'm Nicole Danielle. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. I am glad that you have joined me in another video. Today I wanted to talk to you about homeschooling during difficult times. Um, whatever it is that you're going through and you're feeling like you're quitting and you're done and you're, that you're not good enough and that your kids can do better somewhere else, uh, trust me, I've had all those feelings. And that's what we're going to discuss today. So let's jump right into it. So I know that I have alluded to stuff in my previous videos about a, a bomb that exploded in our, in our family last year. Um, and, and I have, I don't want to be like teasing you or anything. I don't want you to be like, oh my gosh, what's going on? I, I have recorded the video and then I deleted the video. And then I sat down and I took notes and, and wrote some things out and just haven't been brave enough to push the, the record button yet. So, um, when the timing's right, when God gives me all of the words that I need and I'm kind of relying heavily on his wisdom as to what to share and what to not share. I'll get that out when, when he says that it's okay. So, um, I was lucky enough to, <laughs> lucky enough, I was, God, hmm. when everything happened inside of our home, it was June. So we were already on summer break. Like we had just finished school the previous year. I had already made my plans, what I was going to do for the coming up years. I'm I don't think I had purchased a lot of things, but that wasn't difficult, right? Like that's not the consuming, like hitting the, the pay button is not that difficult. Um, so I was very blessed that we were already on a break. If you find yourself not on a break in the middle of a school year, no matter what week number you're on, um, I want to encourage you to just stop. I want you to encourage, I want to encourage you to just Give yourself the break that you need. Um, something's something's happened in your family. Some some trauma somewhere has happened. Um, somebody has passed away. Stuff has come out. Um, somebody is sick. You know, just stop. Just stop for as long as you need to catch your breath and get your mind around what just happened to you or your child. Um however long you need to be able to stand up on your feet again. I, I guess that, I guess that would be the next thing that would be a great piece of advice is to reach out to people and to make sure that people do know what you're going through so they can help you get through it. Especially if you have little kids with the little kids, you know, they're demanding, right? Like you're, you're not going to be able to stop parenting them. You're not going to have that luxury just to hide in your room and, and deal with what is going on or you know they they are relying on you and you and you need to provide for them um but i am encouraging you to stop schooling not stop existing and not stop living and i'm not i'm not saying like just don't get out of bed i'm just saying put the school books away um it's okay to put the school books away it's okay to fall a little bit behind and it's okay to not do math for a month. It really is okay. But you do need to reach out to people. You do need you do need your people to come alongside you and to help pull you through it. If you have teenagers, be honest with them. Be very honest with them with what's going on. Like you just found out that you had cancer. Don't hide it from your children. They already know something's going on. They know that you're not okay. They're very perceptive and they're very loving and they're very understanding and and um, and they'll understand. You know, they you guys need to mourn together. Whatever has happened, you need to rally around each other. Teenagers teenagers are incredible. I I would like to encourage you to give them more more credit than what maybe you are giving them. Um, I mean, you know your child more, you know, you know, you know your child better than anybody knows your child, but uh, I, I believe that it's safe to say that they can shoulder more 
than what you think that they can shoulder. They can handle more. Um, so when you do put the books away, what, what are you going to do, right? You're not just going to sit there. You, you're not going to whatever. You're not going to just exist, right? Uh, go to the park. Go to the movies. Watch movies at home. Stay in your pajamas. Eat cake for breakfast. You read read good books with your children. Get outside and play and invite people over. Do the things that you've, you know, kind of wanted to do, but you didn't have the time to do it because you were so focused on school. But now this thing has happened and it's just a beautiful time to reconnect reconnect with everything and heal together. You know, read your Bible together. Um, it's when everything happened with, with me, we had a hard time. Like we all had a really hard time, especially my older ones, um, the majority of the school year. And so, so say, okay, you can't, you can't leave the books down <laughs> forever you want to educate them or, or maybe you can use it as a distraction technique and you're not interested in you're not interested in letting them stop and they don't necessarily need to stop but cut way back so like take out the fluff do some English do some math and and let it be you know just give yourself the grace and the time and the opportunity to take care of what needs to be taken care of and pull people in and I really think with those things, I really think that's enough. I really think if you're doing the English and you're doing the math, read your Bible together, watch good movies, enjoy each other, play games, and just heal together. That's really all there is to it. That's a really simple, simple life lesson. Um, get the people the counseling that they might need, invest in each other, Invest in your friends that you have been putting off and just slow down. That's another one. Number three, slow down. I know it's different for each person. I'm trying to think of like the many different situations that you could actually be put in right now with loss that would affect the whole family. With, with um, your personal health, I mean, you could have like sick days. You could be chronically ill and have sick days and learn how to work through it. Maybe if you are chronically ill and you're just thinking about homeschooling and you would dub, you would have clicked on this video for some reason. Um, I would say I, I deal with lupus and some days are just difficult. Some days it just feels like you are like trying to walk through quicksand and it's just not working and everything is not functioning and you're just miserable and you're tired and you don't want to get out of bed. Um, I think that's the beauty of homeschooling. No, even no matter, no matter the ages, preschool through senior, it doesn't matter what age your child is in. You have something on yourself that they could do independently, right? If they are really, really little, like, I don't know, fourth grade and under, you don't have to do school that day. You can just cuddle. And again, watch movies. Have them read to you if you're not in the mood for reading. Take them, if, if it's something that, you know, the sun energizes you, just go sit. Just go sit outside and let them play and let them pick wildflowers. Maybe you could grab a nature study book and, and y'all could look through that and just call that school for the day. And let them love the outdoors. Um, I guess really if you're chronically ill, then cooking ahead would be a good thing on the days that you do feel really well. You could make yourselves a bunch of meals and stick them in the fridge or stick them in the freezer and that way you could just pop them in the oven when you needed them. Um, even if you're not dealing with chronic illness, that's a, that's a great thing to do. Have the teenagers cook or on days that you are mentally okay, get in there and cook a bunch of stuff and save leftovers. What happens if you are in the hospital for an extended period of time and it's just a few weeks or a month or so? And I would, I would say 
I personally, I mean, everything is just, this is just my opinion, right? Um, you do, you do you for your family. I think I'm just here to suggest that you can continue on in your homeschool journey through it all. You don't have to send them off to school. You, you don't have to. You can if that's what you want to do, but it's not necessary. I think the the blessing of having them home with you is for you guys to work through it all together and for them to see how to actually handle real life stuff. And you, you know, they're your little disciples at this point underneath you and they get to experience watching you go through something and work through something that has really just knocked you on your butt and they get to watch you navigate that. So yeah, so I just, I wanted to give you permission to just kind of dump the subjects and, and it doesn't have to be perfect and you don't have to expect perfection and your house can be a disaster because nobody cares if they, I mean, if they're your actual friends, if they are your actual friends, then they don't actually care. Tell people, lean in on your tribe, grow your tribe, get, get more friends. And just let them help you and let them serve you in ways that you maybe not, you maybe you're not accustomed to having people help you and serve you. Um, I think, yeah, if you are, I think that's where I was going with that. Like if you're the hospital bound, like with a, a sick child or something with a parent, an ill parent, and you don't want to necessarily bring your kids to the hospital with you if you have child care and stuff you can just lay out your lesson plans you know a light lesson plan have them do a math page have them do an english page have them write you a oh my goodness it would be so fun if you're away from them if you could take some read aloud books with you and you could call and have video chat sessions with your kids and you could sit there and you could read to them and they had that face-to-face -face time with you and they could talk to you about their schoolwork and and you could still read those chapters to them. I think that would be incredibly beautiful. You're there and you desperately want to be with your children and they don't want to just sit there and talk to you on the phone because, you know, talking to children is sometimes like pulling teeth. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you can. That would be a great idea to read to them. Uh, Zoom is really cool. It's paid. You have like 45 minutes for free for a meeting, but if you wanted to pay for it and they have like Google meet and even FaceTime really and truly. But I was just thinking like, if you guys wanted to watch a video together or something, turn on a documentary, turn on a Netflix thing, turn on a science film or something and watch that together, um, on like a zoom meeting call, somebody could share their screen and y'all could watch that. And you would feel like you're in the same room together. And that way you still get to be with your children and help them while you're also dealing with maybe a sick parent or something. So lots of self care, lots of taking your own time to breathe, lots of letting them be a little bit more free than what you're used to. A lot of letting go, a lot of letting go of perfection. You don't have to have the neat house. It doesn't have to be tidy. Letting your kids do chores, you know, giving them more responsibility and just kind of letting go of all the extra, the fluff, the the lowering the expectations and realizing that your children are also hurting uh, and it, it's also a struggle for them so don't demand perfection from them lighten their load and I think that would be I think that's a great start I yeah grace grace and a, abundantly poured out grace upon yourself and upon them and um if it's, if it's looking like it's going to be a chronic situation, then you might want to look into, you know, a school option or something, but you don't have to. And that's just all I really wanted to say is you don't have to give up on your homeschool dreams if you're going through a hard time and, and your kids are going to be resilient and they're going to be fine and they're not going to be behind and they're going to learn exactly what they need to learn for the future. And because God's got this, right? God provides everything for us. And he is going to take this tragedy and he is going to turn it into a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, yeah. So just let him work through it and, and open your mouth and ask for help and tell your story where you can 
and to whom you can. And um, yeah, with that, I think I'm going to go. I am so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that I could kind of share my heart with what's been going on here. And yeah, I think that's it. I hope you guys have a great day. I will see you next week. And yeah, that's it. Bye guys.